Hello, this is Alex Hoare. This is the um, Land Use Subcommittee of the Amherst Conservation Commission for our April 2 meeting. And we have an agenda where we're going to start uh, by going over our site schedules, our site visit schedule. And then we're going to focus on our agriculture policy. And then we'll talk about next agenda topics. So we have uh, with us Bruce Stedman and Michelle Lab and Eric uh, Jacques. And I think Dave Zomack is probably going to join us. So the first item of business is to go over our site visits. And I, I looked at my calendar, Aaron, I don't see any. That's correct. So we, we've been through our um, site visits that had been previously scheduled. Um, and I can certainly schedule another round. Um, so we've been so far to Pota, uh, um, Zala in North Amherst. We've been to um, Haskins Meadow. We've been to Belchtown Road uh, or Belt, um, excuse me, um, Fort River Farm. Fort River Farm on Belchtown Road. And we've been to Amethyst Brook. Um, there, in terms of existing agriculture, the, the only other potential sites that we were talking about visiting were um, potentially Wentworth Farm. And then um, we had talked about potentially visiting Elf Meadow. So those were the only other two sites. And I can send a doodle poll around for um, possible times. Um, Michelle, would you mind sending me your availability? Um, what might work for you first? And then I can plug that into the doodle poll since your schedule might be tough. Yeah. Um, so is this generally for the next month or two? Or what's the scope that you'd like to see? Um, why don't you do like the next six weeks? And we're only trying to pin down two additional um, okay. site visits. Bruce? Yeah. Um, so our effort is to try to wrap up this agricultural policy. Will the site visits actually help us do anything more with this document than we've already done or we're already getting close to the end of? And if so, do we really need to do them? Or is it also the case that we simply should have in our minds a picture of all the, the conservation land that that this subcommittee is focusing on, and therefore maybe we should go to other conservation sites rather than agricultural ones. That's my question. I think those so, are all great points. Um, so I think, Bruce, the priority was to visit agricultural sites because we were working on that policy document. And if Michelle will allow, maybe we could tighten up the um, schedule to just the next couple of weeks. Um, okay. I don't know if that her schedule will allow that, but. Um, yeah, I don't, I don't know when spring break is, Aaron, but is that the 16th? I'm, I'll be out of town then. So next week would be available. And then after that, um, mid-April week. <clears throat> Yeah, the 15th and the 19th is the spring break. So will you be gone, Michelle, for our next subcommittee meeting? I will be here next. Sub oh, yes, I guess so. Um, yeah, I mean, there's a chance I can join, but just probably count me out. Well, if you're in Disneyland, I don't want to interrupt that. <laughs> so, I'm going to have a scheduling difficulty, too. So All right. Um, the what is it? April twelfth is the next one. Sixteenth. Uh, sixteenth. Oh yes. And uh, the May seventh, May twenty first, June fourth. Um, I now that I'm a fishing surveyor, the schedule calls for um times that either go from eight to one or go from one to six, but he, all of those are problematic for this meeting because I have to drive there and get there by one or I won't, if it's over at one, I, I miss the whole thing. So um, 
I hate the thought of trying to have a different time, but those are gonna all all of the next four meetings are gonna be problematic. Is it every day of the week as well, or is it Tuesday? Uh, uh, it is a given schedule by a uh, by the Fish and Wildlife Service as to when this gets done. I have very little latitude. Are are we talking about? Sorry, I was a minute or two late. Are we talking about site visits here? Yeah. Yes. Well. And and I'm talking about this meeting. Uh, yeah, so we were talking about site visits, but now we have moved into an awkwardness with the timing of this meeting because uh, uh, Bruce, Bruce is now gainfully employed. Right. <laughs> so um, if it's helpful, I could be available at like 9 or 8.30 for this, um, and we could make it temporary or whatever, but, you know, I have flexibility. Um, yeah, you could... Can you meet before your folks on the West Coast get up? Yeah, yeah. Okay. So, so why don't are good? Yep. Why don't we leave it to uh, Aaron to, unless we can just identify a time now, and then move on. Sounds like Aaron. Well, Michelle, this this meeting is set up pretty much to accommodate your schedule. So, why don't you tell us what you can do, and the rest of us can do it. We'll we'll join you. Okay, so I guess just to summarize, if 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 it's possible to have like a short term change in time, that would be ideal for me, and then roll back roll back to noon when Bruce is available again. That would that would work. Okay. So we're talking nine o'clock on Wednesday. Nine o'clock on Wednesday. Tuesday or Wednesday. Tuesday. My Tuesday mm -hmm. mornings are not good. Um, they're they're just full all the time. And um, so I don't have a nine o'clock on Tuesday. If we want to move it to Wednesday, I could do that. I can I can do Wednesday. Aaron, can you do Wednesday? As long as it's not a concom day, that that would be fine for me. Yeah. Well, these are set up to be opposite of the concom weeks, right? Yeah. Yep. Wednesday works for me. Wednesday mornings. So that doesn't solve our issue on the 16th. Do we want to move the meeting on the 16th to the 30th and schedule it for 9 a.m. that morning? I could meet at 9 on the 16th, maybe. Does that work for you, Bruce? I don't know. It's too complicated. Um, let's okay. just do what Michelle, let's move it to what okay. Michelle can do. Okay. And I'll try to come to as many of them as I can. Okay. That's all the time we have for that. Um, okay. uh, yeah. Alex, can I just say one thing about site visits? There's, there's a part of me that feels like, I don't know, it feels like we should get just keep moving on the policy. I'm, I'm not sure how much more site visits are going to inform the policy in my mind. I don't know. I read through this this morning and I was like, yeah. You know, do we need to get out to see lots more sites to inform this policy? That's just my thought this morning. <clears throat> um, just real quickly, uh, I think we wanted to see as many conservation areas as we could. You know them by heart. We don't. Yeah, uh, I'm just thinking for the sake of time and getting this to the commission. I mean, there's 75 parcels. There's, you know, there's a lot to see out there. And I just... I well, just we want to see about agricultural time. land first. So how about if we, uh, um, I favor the site visits and um, I just sh show of hands uh, between my other commissioners here on how you feel about site visits. Not just ag agricultural land. Well, but... Yeah, I want to see other places that are not agricultural. Like my my preference is if we're going to do a site visit that we have like a specific intent for it. So, um, you know, yeah. if we're at a place where we're evaluating sites for agriculture, then seeing the other ones with Dave or Aaron is useful. But if we're just sort of visiting, then I could probably mm -hmm. just check it out on my own time. Um, yeah, I think like but, just so that's a yes. I, I, it's a yes and no. <laughs> I mean, I I That's agree that with Bruce and Dave that maybe we don't need the site visits to finish up the policy. 
So I agree with that because um, it's not going to further inform us, is it? But are we talking about the agricultural section of the whole policy or the whole policy itself? Okay. If we're talking about the whole policy, I think that site visits are useful. But as far as the agriculture right. section, I don't think that we need to go visit more sites to finish up that section. Unless okay. Dave thinks that we are missing something at those other and two I, Wentworth. And I'd like to know, I, I'm going to move this conversation, but if if we're not going to visit more ag sites, I would like to know where they are and I'll go see them myself. So I'd like to close this conversation. And because we allocated only 10 minutes for it, we've already gone over that. So that eats into Bruce's 40 minutes to talk about agriculture. So with you, we'll um, bear with me. We'll move along. Uh, Bruce sent out uh, uh, a version this morning that incorporates my comments. And he's done a very nice job of putting the policy matters at the top and the procedures and requirements below that. So they're not all mixed up. So I'm gonna turn this over to Bruce. And Bruce, we're now at 13 past. So I'm sorry we ate up some of your time. Oh, it's okay, we'll see what we can do. And we're, <clears> gonna, <throat> we're gonna give 40 minutes to this, but I wanna reserve time at the end to talk about future agenda items. Okay. And we will, um, we will close at one. Okay. So this is draft 10 is the one you should have. There are yellow sections that are new. Some of those are held over from the previous version nine that were new in that one too. Um, Alex did a pretty careful read of this this morning. Um, so what I'd like to try to do is just agree, like we did last time, agree to the things that are easy to agree to and see what's left to then swing back and see if we can solve the more complicated one. Okay, so I'd like to um, ask if Aaron can bring share screens and bring up whatever document Bruce wants. And I'd like to give some guidelines for discussion um, just to help move this along. If we could um, say things once and minimize examples unless somebody asks for one. That might help us uh, uh, move along through the document. We're hoping are we're hoping that we're near the end of this particular one. And uh, Bruce has told me we probably need one more meeting to talk about this. But I'm going to bring to the next meeting all the items that I think are wrapped up so that we can talk about what goes to the commission. Thank you, Bruce. Uh, Aaron, can you make it slightly larger? Yes. There we go. So uh, Alex raised a question um, about the goal and the uh, goals and policies, uh, et cetera. That first comment there, I'll deal with that later. Um, he asked that we use the words allow instead of encourage and suitable instead of offered. Any concerns about that as the very first thing that someone would read? No concerns. I had a comment for it if we're taking comments. Yeah, um, I was just wondering if we should add something like by and for the community or something like that. Just to some broad sweeping yeah, goals. I the type the language you'd like in an email and I'll stick it in. Okay. Um, okay, so uh, Alex also added the thing about the licenses really explaining why it's a license, which seemed good. And any concerns about leaving that the way it is, a number one under policies? It's Maybe fine. Number two, I think this is a revised sentence, but in, in any case, I wanted you to read it. Well, it's been reformatted. Yeah. Okay, then we, I put these in bullets because the sentences were getting kind of long. Um, I, one of us has added climate change, mission-oriented alternative uses, opportunities gained or and foregone as aspects that the commission would consider.
right? Yeah, the only thing I would add under other factors, and maybe this is site history, but there is a significant amount of Amherst conservation land that has been purchased using state and federal grants. That's lower. That's down. That's there, John, um, Dave. I'm on number two section. Page one, number two. Oops, the three bullets there. Yeah, yeah, where did where is the grant? It's, it's down below. It's it's, it's on the next page. Oh, next page. Sorry. Okay, so those are okay. Um, Alex added bees in number four. That's to be consistent because they're mentioned down below. Okay, it's an easy one. Okay, now in number six is approval, and we have some comments about that. Um, trying to see who's I. Oh, my comment. I I didn't, Bruce, I didn't know what you were trying to say here. Well, keep in mind, it wasn't necessarily me. It's, I could have come from something from five years ago. But fair enough. I take responsibility for it. Well, I... Um, anyway, we want to address the, the thing that Alex has raised in AH6, in number six, approval. So if you could each would read this and let's try to figure out what to do with it. Um, yeah, people can't read my comment. It's it begins with a blue highlighted statement. Blue blue highlighted statement. I think um, if Aaron, you would click on the arrow, it would come up. Yeah, and you might be able to handle that one by yourself, Bruce. But okay, it says may be granted at the commission's sole discretion. I didn't know if we were flaunting our authority or what. I mean, I would expect us to grant something by our own authority or by our discretion. I don't know what this approval wants to say. And can it be said differently? So I, th I think you could probably do that one by yourself. Okay, I'll, I'll take care of it. Unless somebody just wants to jump out and... Well, it may be that it's also a question of sort of the broader, what is the commission in, in, enabled and entitled to do under the town's bylaws and things. I'll, I'll check in with, with Dave and Aaron about that one. I mean, it's not, it's not inaccurate. It's just written quite boldly. Okay. Yeah. I'll work on it. Number seven. If you're citing our authority, why not just do that and put it right at the top? Okay. Number seven. Uh, did we did we talk about number five? Further? No, I didn't. Uh, go ahead and go back to it. Yeah, I gotta, I gotta think about number five. I'm not one hundred percent sure commercial activities. I know direct sales are not allowed on land, conservation land purchase with mass, uh, DCS but I'm not sure it precludes commercial activities. And then later on, I see Alex, was it Alex saying this broad sweeping statement? Are we, are we saying no commercial? Yeah. I didn't know we were going as far as say no commercial activities. Yeah. That's yeah. new language, isn't it? That's new. So um, that means we worked on this two or three meetings, two or three sessions ago. So I may have gotten it wrong. Let's fix it. If So I think what, what was previously restricted was direct sales. So meaning that they couldn't set up, say, like a farm on stand land, yeah. on the land and have people coming to purchase directly um, at the site. But we have had agricultural producers who were... Um, commercially selling the material you know the the produce or whatever that they were growing um and they would all want to do that mm -hmm. presumably well unless they consume it themselves but aaron can you bring up my comment on that last sentence uh um, number five yeah right there Yeah, I mean, as the Fort River Farm 
is, I mean, <laughs> the reason we bought it was with the potential that commercial farming could be done there. So, um, yeah, I, I think this one's a little, in my mind, a little too tight. I think it excludes a lot of so agricultural activities. Maybe we just drop out the whole sentence, Bruce. The last sentence in general? Or you could just take <laughs> out commercial activities and say direct sale of farm goods and just in front of commercial say direct commercial or something like that. Um, to make it clear that we're just talking about direct, direct, direct sales. sales. Yeah. Well, what's, like what's wrong? What's wrong? If they're going to sell it, why put limits on how they can sell it? If well, they because... if they're going to cart it off site and sell it, what's the difference between that and having a pick your own strawberry field? The that's what we're saying. All land protected with self-help funds you cannot do direct sales we've had over 40 self-help grants so my guess is we'll be very hard pressed to find a parcel that doesn't have self-help self-help funding in it so they we can't do direct sales on conservation land that's okay that's so that dave the, 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 the kicker then is on conservation land correct so mm -hmm. a direct sale on conservation land right I understand that. I yeah. was having trouble with direct sale. Yeah. So, so they can take they, it off site and sell it wherever they want. Yeah. yeah. So so just to be clear, the last sentence is not really true. Yeah, let's just drop it out. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yep. All so right. Let's, we can tighten up number five and really focus, as Aaron said, on direct sales. Got and, it. And, and not allowing direct sales on the land. So okay. Dave, you want to suggest some language offline? Uh, no, I got it. I'll I'll work on it. We can okay. when we read Good. it one last time, we'll have it. Good. Number seven. So this is mostly new or or highly revised. Can you uh, click on the Alex? This assumes that, Aaron. Sorry, could you say that again, Bruce? I missed it. Click on Alex's, this assumes that, so we can read it. Oh, okay. No, so this assumes that. There we go. It's a question to Dave. Wait, uh, I'm sorry. Uh, Number seven. Issue Alex's license. question. Who well, issues the license? I, I think the commission issues the license Throughout this document, I am kind of going through in my head what role the department will play because I, I do think it's going to be, in most cases, more of a department relationship with the person holding the license. And through the department will come reports. Through the department will come a report of neglect. Oh, commission. Yeah. You know, so nobody's, that, yeah, that, that kind of thing. We actually deal with that in another section. Mm -hmm. and so I think I think you're right. It is the commission who issues the license. Okay. And it is the commission who revokes the license. But it is the okay. director who administers the license. Correct. Right. Yeah. Got it. Okay. That's clarified yes. down below. And okay. Okay. So what we attempted to do here was to divide the policies from the procedures and that this comes this came about because of that discussion we all had out there at Fort River Farm about the difference so we thought oh okay let's let's give it a try so this is our attempt so if you see something in the procedure section that to you really is more of a policy let me know and I'll move it but for now this is the divider um a is something Alex added I think it's to good effect explaining what is the situation of a request for proposals. Procedure A. So Dave, is that consistent with past stuff? Has the commission selected the, for the RFP? How does that? 
how has that been done previously? Just yeah, what we've done in the past is we've had you know one or two commission members, a staff member or two. We even had historically a member of the ag commission, and they selected. Granted, we didn't have twenty applicants, but this is the ideal, right? You, you might have somebody from the ag commission. We did in in the past have somebody from ag commission, concom, and staff, and they reviewed the documents. They even did an interview. And they selected the folks to get licensed. Okay. So hearing no concerns about that language uh, in B, the question is, does an application form exist? And if not, who's going to create it? Uh, I think we have a draft application form and staff would, would uh, we could update that for right. 2024 and 25. Right. Can I just, I'm sorry to go back to A again. We'll review applications filed in response to an RFP and we'll determine if any applicants, see, I think more properly it is, we'll recommend to the commission, again, the commission, the, 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 the committee, you know, the commission, okay, we're, the commission working with staff. Okay, that's fine. I, I'm sorry. I think that's fine. Okay. All right, um, E, and I think this is sort of a, a reworking. We got to have something in the in the appendix. What constitutes an abutter? Oh, excuse me. I mean E, section E. I misunderstood. I thought you said B. Oh no. <clears throat> Yeah, that's interesting. I hadn't looked at this closely. Aaron, yeah, what do you think about that, Aaron? I mean, the only challenge I see is you have a parcel like Wentworth Farm, and before you know it, you have you could have a hundred abutters. Um, yeah, I mean, what have have we done that historically, Dave? No, no. I mean, I don't think it's a bad idea, but it just it's one more thing, one more step, and. In this case, um, the question might be, are they direct abutters in the sense that their boundary line touches the boundary line of the site? Or is it a distance thing like some other types of abutting can be? I think this would have to be share a property line. I don't think we can do 300 feet or, I mean. It just, yeah. Yeah, it gets huge. It just balloons out into. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So, I mean, I, I guess I have a, a couple thoughts on this, which are, if it's not a piece of land that's been in agricultural production in the last five years, meaning it's gone fallow in order, and it's near a resource area within jurisdiction or a buffer zone, we would need to file a permit to convert it to an agricultural use. Um, at, in that process, we'd be notifying abutters if we were converting it back to an agricultural use. Otherwise, it was in agricultural use for the last five years and we have the legal ability to to use it for that purpose. So I'm a little on the fence about this one, particularly I know abutters sometimes are objection have objections to being near farms. Um, the sights, smells, sounds of being next to a farm can be offensive to people. So just like how we approach this could, you know, okay, cause so Jer Aaron nowhere in here is there any mention of a permit process and so that's a gap in this document that needs to be filled so would you work with bruce on that and leave it to bruce to uh i'm coming to you michelle would you work with bruce on getting something in here about what you just said um I certainly could. Do we think it's necessary? I mean, is that, yeah. do you guys think that's necessary? Okay. If you're going to convert land use and we need a permit process. Well, I think it's a, it's a good idea because it's a, it tells the reader the lesson, you know, the person out there, there is a mechanism for having a hearing about this also if it's tells, under this particular condition. Also tells future commissioners. Yes, Michelle. I just, I just think that what Aaron said about um, the, process and the mechanism for having a butter for notification that it's been out of use for five years is is good and that we may not need this i don't think we should have a butter notification if it's like you know within five years is agriculture the the, the parcel is agriculture it's recreation like they 
I don't know, that it's already a right that is, exists. And I think this is a little above and beyond and sort of problematic. So I think using the mechanism that Aaron suggested and then removing this additional notification is what, where I'm at. Good. Can, okay. Can you two work that out, please? Sure, no problem. <laughs> Alex, I'm just going to suggest one thing to Aaron and, and Bruce. Maybe there's a way to do this like a, what do you call it, a master NOI or whatever it's called, Aaron? Because I, if we want to do this, I think it's on us. It's not on the farmer to do this process. So mm -hmm. if we select, pick a number, six places to do agriculture, I think we need to permit that. You know, and, and I will tell you right now, I'm trying to rack my brain. What area has been in active agricultural use in the last five years? I, Zala and Haskins Zala? Meadow. Zala? I, we'll talk offline, but yeah. I yeah. don't even think Zala has. And Haskins Meadow, yeah. I'm but not many. I'm not many. I'm delighted we found this area that needs discussion. That's exactly what that's 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 good that we found it. Mm -hmm. Okay, moving on. Um, so that sec that subsection was called getting a license to farm. So now, once you have a license, the question is what what kind of license? What is it authorizing? So that's agricultural use on page three. Starts with letter I, and um, Alex added a couple of extra pieces to it for the crops section. You on one of the crops? Yeah. Yeah. This is I letter I, yep. page three. Any any interest there to what the change he suggested? Letter J, the highlighted part, I think Alex added this, but it may have been a reworking of the words. You're talking about the highlighted? Yeah. It seemed new to me, but it, maybe it was a re a re no, I, guess I added the business about livestock being along streams. Yeah. Okay. I, I just worded it in terms of being a protected resource area buffers. Yeah. And Alex, I, did I, did you I got, comment on how I like your comment or your question of above how does how does how do crops improve water quality? Are you talking about like cover crops, buffer? You, you posed that question, right? Yeah, I don't know how agriculture improves water quality. Anybody? How does agriculture improve water quality? Yeah. Back in up well, in letter I. Well, I guess it depends on the existing site conditions, you know, what you're going from and to, right? If the site is a, you know. I just don't think of agriculture as a method for improving water quality. Mm-hmm. But if we assume every ag field that we currently manage and own is a fallow field, how does converting it to agriculture improve water quality from a fallow field? So maybe just just thinking about that a little bit. Let's say mm -hmm. we have an existing field and it's not very well seeded, for example. Let's say it's overgrown with like some kind of invasive like reed canary grass or something like that. And somebody comes in and they put in a buffer strip of vegetation around the field that's like a native grass or something. And then they're planting it and using methods that prevent erosion. Then that could be an, an improvement, I would say. Um, but I do mm -hmm. totally see your point And it's kind of um, you know, it would take steps of meaningful actions and also take into account existing site conditions to kind of assess that. Yeah, so Fair when, enough. Fair enough. when I commented, I'm thinking Dave's not here and somebody else might be in his position that thinks differently than Dave. And I don't know how what the life expectancy of this policy document is, but I would hate to have somebody different than Dave in Dave's position pointing to this saying agriculture improves water quality. I don't think agriculture improves water quality. I don't my either. Vote, my vote's just to take it out until it somehow does in some version of our future. Okay, I'm, I'm kind of taking it out. Now, my apologies to you because I got ahead of ourselves a little bit. Can we go back to letter I, line two? And then can you 
put where it says discuss include wild edibles. Can you make that bigger, Aaron, so we can read it? Line two. The second line of I, and it says Bruce Stedman discussed wild edibles, and we need oh. the thing bigger so I can. Nope, not that one. The other one. Nope, that one. There we go. So these came up in the context of the review that several people did from the farming point of view. And then Alex also had a point in a past document in this, in this particular area. So can we solve this now or is this gonna be one that we circle back to? I think my, my comment about opposing removal of mass crops from forest land is, um, comes from the forestry section. I don't remember talking about, I just, mass, mass trees being, I don't see how they're involved with agriculture. So okay. that, that part of it, I think, is out of place. The rest of it, um, I'll leave to others. Okay. So if we just say wild edibles and, and that, leave it at that, the question is, is that part of agriculture? People gleaning wild edibles from, from conservation land. Oh, I see what you're saying. Oh, I misunderstood. Oh. Sorry. And this may not be the proper section, but. Well, it's a great question, like ramps and uh, <clears throat> mushrooms and stuff like that. People huh. frequently go and harvest them without any kind of approval. It's... Yeah. So Michelle? I think that's an area of the another section in our policy document. We do address that. I don't think it's agriculture. Agriculture is like cultivation. So okay, I just don't consider them to be the same thing. Yeah, I thought um, we covered it in, in like our rules and regulations. No, no removal of plants. And I, th I thought it was in the rules. Yeah, it's somewhere else. We talked somewhere. about berry picking, which hopefully still is allowed. But yeah. Okay, I will deal with that later. But and I'll take that. I mean, it, there's no particular thing in the letter I that needs to be changed. It was a question about other things like tree frost. Okay. Um, hey. and, let's see. We've dealt with the rest of that in I. In J, best management practices. And I said, according to whom or who? So, Aaron, can you put up? Did, is, did I say anything else about it in there? Yeah, I thought you had a comment you, where you said a comment according to who. I thought you went on. I'm trying to find it on my own sheet here. Oh, who defines re reasonable stocking limits, overgrazing, etc.? Look at uh, Department of Agriculture, USDA, call the Extension Service. Okay, we've lost the chair. There was a hiccup in internet service there. I got kicked out for a minute. Okay. Likewise. I'm so so I'm sorry, I, I may have missed some of what you said, Bruce. Could you just reorient where, where we are? Page three. Um And where, I'm sorry, where are we on page three? I know we just talked about the crop, edible crops, but then I missed the start of the next. It's down in the, it says, um, oh, shoot, no, I can't find it. Oh, it has to do with what is best management practices. It's down towards the middle of the end there. Yeah. My, BS24 is the comment, but I don't see the share, so it, it's hard to... I think the point that oh. Bruce is trying to make is that are we going to point to a document that identifies best management practices rather than leaving it up to the imagination of the commission? I have some experience with stocking rates and conservation lands, and it's not uncomplicated. I don't know how it's done in New England, but um, you can obviously walk out and see if something isn't looking good 
but I don't, I mean, I don't know how to do it. It's about like taking RDM surveys and seeing how much grass is still there and stuff. But if there is some like easy cheat sheet that could be hyperlinked in there for some kind of reference that might be useful just to have some like actual guidance um, other than saying this doesn't look good, it's eroding, it's bare ground. I mean. <laughs> do you have something like that, Michelle? It's, but it's for California and it's, I mean. Oh, that's a long ways away. <laughs> well, research is <laughs> It says research. And so yeah. I will research that. Okay. Move on. So we're in. Bruce, if we come to a dead end on this, it, the world's not going to come to an end if we just simply say best management practices. Hey, yeah, I know. And I'm not going to spend a lot of time on it either, but I just want to double check if there's something. Got it. Got it. In L, Alex has asked, uh, if you could, one more, Aaron, down, down, Alex, just do we license facilities? I don't know. Or L, letter L. Do we have any no. buildings? I don't know what a facility is, but I assume it's a building. There we go. Think, Thank you. Do, do we have any buildings that we license? Not, not the conservation department. I think it's just land. Yeah, so I, I was just wondering. So to, we can take out the word facilities. That'd be great. Okay. All right. Do, do, Moving we on. To, do we need to say licensed rights are not transferable? Why wouldn't you just say licenses are not transferable? Licenses. Okay. That's fine. Well, so, so just to piggyback on that, Dave, a little bit. We've had situa and I know I, I'm not sure where else we mentioned this in the policy, but I know in the past we've had issues with um somebody who has a lease um or a, a license rather and they allowed somebody else to participate um without mm -hmm. the town knowing about it mm -hmm. um is this re referring to that because i even though they're not the i think the point being if you're not the licensee you shouldn't be doing work on the land right you're not approved to do work on the land if you're not the licensee yeah absolutely and i think in the next sentence you know Producer's license uh, shall not contract, subcontract, sublet, or partner with other users for any purpose unless explicitly reviewed and approved. Does mm -hmm. that cover it, Aaron? Yeah, I think so. Okay. Yeah, because that is a problem. The, the farmers go, hey, you know, I got this half acre over here. I'm not using it. Why don't you use it? Right. Right. So, yeah. Dave, the reason I said licensed rights, I have a discussion down below about a license being a contract. And um, rather than saying the license is not transferable, the the rights that somebody has under the license are not transferable. Just like you just said, I have a half acre over here that's not being used. Why don't you go use it? I don't feel strongly either way. You can keep license rights. I would... Leave it in. Yeah, no problem. Okay. Um, yeah. M, section M, hours of operations. Yeah, the main point I made here is consistency between dusk and dawn and normal hours of operation. Regular during the regular occur regularly, and then we've got dusk and dawn versus another time frame. I think we should leave regular out. I agree. I put a line through it. Mm -hmm. Um. And who knows what normal hours of operation are? That that's that's mm -hmm. like that's in the eyes of the right. mm -hmm. But the the conservation lands are dust of dawn, so it's you know a lot of time in the summer. It is long long days. Yeah, I just recall that this this was discussed before because of haying and if they're they need to get up pre-dawn or something to get a start on the haying or collect it or something, that's that's what I recall about when, when there might be an outside of right. normal hour. Yeah. We, we try to address that in the second half of the paragraph. Okay. Looks fine to me. So we're gonna take out normal hours of operation. Agree. Okay. I think there's a typo in there. I'll catch it. Here we go. Um, research. How does the town define permanent structures? In P, 
We can, Aaron could have a conversation with our building commissioner, but I think, I, I think we could define that using some building terms. For instance, having a foundation, you know, to me, the difference between a high tunnel and a greenhouse with a poured concrete uh, floor, that to me, you know, when you're pouring concrete for flooring, when you're, you know, so we can ask our, our building officials for a little guidance on that, but that's kind of my, my take. Oh, did we just get bumped? No, there we go. Okay. What do, what do others vote? Aaron, do you have any thoughts? Um, you know, for instance, a well, is a well a permanent structure? Mm. Yeah, I mean, I would say anything that requires a permit too, um, anything that triggers a permit, like for example, sheds under a certain size don't require yeah, permitting. Right. I just um, went I just went through this in the town where I own property in New Hampshire, and a structure is anything man-made. Right, well, I think we should be consistent with other features that the building inspector or the building department is yeah, concerned right. with. So the, the thing I'd like to watch out for, Bruce, is uh, these temporary car shelters that are yeah like a tent. Yeah, you can, you can put them up using um, cinder blocks, just laying on the ground, and yeah versus a permanent something with a foundation. Mm -hmm. But I'll let you work. I'll it work out. that out with Aaron. Yeah. Okay. So in Q, there's some additional language about stuff left overnight. Um, and then in R, Alex had a thought about how to address the delegating of authority, whether it's um, in the proper place. So I could do some reorganizing there. And then I had a, a research question, which I haven't fully addressed yet. So I'll try to do that. Do, do, do we? Um, on the delegation of authority, I'm not sure. Um, I, I need some input. Maybe you can give it some thought and provide some feedback. If this is a long discussion, um, maybe on we'll what Alex said, there was section on R where it R. talks about delegation of authority. Four. If you have a quick answer, great. If you need to think about this or talk to somebody, maybe we can highlight this to bring it up next time we meet. I don't see too, too much. I, I like section R. Should okay. the letters be included in, in it? So if you read my comment. Let me try to put it in a different place and rework it and get Dave's feedback. And because we're, mm -hmm. we're almost to the end of this and we're at 10 minutes to go. I right. do okay. think that I do think that Alex might be on something with the delegation of authority thing because if there's a situation where the commission we're in between meetings or something and there's some immediate action that needs to be taken, it seems like it's appropriate for staff to be able to act. Um, you know, it could be yeah. anything. But, but I would I would even add, you know, these are there's these are interpersonal relationships. A lot of times, somebody is. You know, so I think at all costs, you don't want these things going to a commission meeting. They're going to take up valuable time that you have more important things to do. Um, you know, you know, farmer to farmer interaction, you know, farmer to user of the conservation land. Those should, you know, in most instances, those should be dealt with by staff. You know, because you you need a whole meeting to deal with them. You have to meet as a body to discuss well, uh, a resolution. Is what I'm and saying. That's what, that's what R is attempting to achieve. Yeah, like, and and I and think that, it does. And Alex's point is, it's sort of buried here that it needs to be in a different place to give it more authority at the beginning. Michelle, right, wherever you'd like to put it. I just wanted to clarify there's I was looking at you there's somewhere where it says any equipment that is left over is and if it's stolen is not the responsibility of of anybody except the farmer just I'm sure that it's already there but it just made me think of it 
Uh, okay, I'll I'll look around and see, and if not, I'll put it in. Okay. So we're running okay. into we're running into. Uh, All right. Well, we're not going to get to the end then. So, but well, we're close. So well, I will. Let's. let's uh, how about if we do this? If we pause. Let's cover our our next agenda items, which maybe we don't need all the remaining time, and then come back to this document. Okay. Can I have one minute to just add something about agriculture for like sure. food yeah. for thought yeah. right now? Okay. So something that I've been seeing is um like tribal engagement and sort of land use given to tribes. So this is a big, big movement in land holding entities and it could be in the future for Amherst and one of the models of this is where a municipality or a land trust or something gives some portion of land to uh, a tribe to use for subsistence farming and in some cases that involves them actually planting like native traditional species so it's a it's a different model than we're talking about agriculture here because the wild edible thing made me think of it because it is a cultivation, but it's a bit different. So I just wanted to throw this out there as food for thought and if it should be handled maybe somewhere else or talk about it later. Okay, so that goes right to next agenda items. So why don't you, Michelle, write up a short paragraph. And I will tell you that I sent a uh, an acknowledgement that this is a, a unceded okay. indigenous land to the town council members to see if town council couldn't adopt something like that. But uh, so let's talk about next agenda items. And Michelle has just put one on there. So that's indigenous agriculture. How do you want to talk? How do you want to label it? What, subsistence use. I, I don't think they call it agriculture. Um, it's so, like it's like an access agreement to land um, for subsistence harvesting. All I want to do is get a name so we can get it on the agenda. Traditional use access. Indigenous. Put the word indigenous in there. And we're going to continue agriculture with, with uh, Bruce. Correct. And hopefully wrap it up. That's I'll, my goal. <laughs> I will also come to next agenda with um, <clears throat> the items that we, I think we're done with. And where I'm headed is to have a package to bring back to the commission. I don't know how many items will be in it, but I'd like very, I'd like to bring a package to the commission. So I will, <laughs> I'll, that's an action item for me. And so, can we get to read it ahead of time? The other sections, yeah, that are, that are regarded as done. Yeah. Okay. It's not, gonna, it's not gonna be a neat and pretty package. No. It's gonna be sections. I, I just want to. It's been so long. I want to be reminded of what's in them. Okay. Okay. I for a while was keeping a file, and I still have that. So. Agenda items is uh, in, in, we got three agenda items. What else do we need to do? That's probably, that's about all we have time for. In these meetings, that, that'll take it all. Yeah, okay. Back to Bruce, unless anybody's got something else. Section S. Uh, Alex had a comment previous, et cetera. Okay, we'll, we'll deal with that separately. That's, uh, okay, next page. Uh, uh, I, you. Sorry? I think Dave needs to see that comment. We just buzzed well, by it. I get it with, to him and just find out what the town can and should do. Yeah. I Dave, I suggested here that if we're going to collect fees, that the town establish a special account to hold fees for use on conservation land. And if we need to talk about that, I'll move it to the agenda for our next meeting. But that goes to you saying it just goes into the general pot and we don't have access to it. And there's more to that than, so I want to add that to the next agenda is talk about uh, fees and, and the general account. Not now, next time. Sure. Okay. Uh, yeah. Land use and management is the next section, uh, section U. Uh, Alex had a question. you yeah do we need this here the he just wants it moved and say it's not about buffer strips so i'll deal with that and then section v is about soil conservation 
and he's asking for a definition in the glossary. Yep. And then section W is about fencing. Can we That's remove, some, can I add? Added that one. Can, it says the commission encourages use of smooth wire fencing. So that's also called wildlife friendly fencing. Can we just require it? I would love to. <laughs> okay. I was trying to be gentle. Okay. But, uh... Called what? Well, it's wildlife friendly fencing or wildlife friendly fencing. But I, but the the operative word is the, the change that I'm suggesting is encourages to require. Uh, yes, I see it. Thank you. And I think it might be useful to include both terms, like wildlife friendly fencing slash smooth fencing, because yeah, or like in parentheses, so it's clear what yeah. we mean. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. Okay. What I was what I was moving them toward is barbed wire is a electric fence, and it you know okay, it, but all but, right, down to the end, Aaron. So, is there any more? I don't think so. I have a comment about the very last one, the waiver, which I didn't comment on, but this worries me uh, because it's a it's a it's a wide open barn door that just says to the future commission, uh, somebody replacing Dave, that they can toss everything we've just gone through out, and uh, with good reason, which who knows what that is. The commission may waive and modify the terms however they want. Uh, it I, let's put it on the agenda for next time, but I, I think we really need to think about this one. I know you're trying to be flexible, but um, this is a this gives permission for a lot of mischief. Maybe I could require a vote by the commission or something. Yeah, I was going to say one commission member shouldn't be granting it. Maybe can we put it on the agenda for next time? Because we're sure. I'll I'll put it in as a as a discussion item. Okay. Handing back to the back to the chair. We are twelve fifty nine, and uh, and out of courtesy to Michelle, primarily, we are going to close on time, as well as Dave and Aaron. And, well, it sounds uh, like she well, already worked earlier today on on misbehavior. Out there. More, more, and more misbehavior. Yeah, if anybody can think of ways. To, to prevent that, I'm still curious. Oh, there's a there's an easy way, but I won't say it out loud. What what's the misbehavior? I miss that. I sent you were copied on an email, Dave, about um, Belchtown Road. Actually, I'd love to stay on and talk to you if we adjourn. Okay, sure. So, do I have a motion to close and stop recording? I move that. Second. So moved. All right. Thanks, everyone. See you later. Okay, see ya. Bye. Bye, everyone. Bye-bye. Okay. Aaron, I will be there at Amherst College. Okay. Sounds good. See you then. Yeah.